That's right. Still been crickets. Still not quite responding right. It's going to take all that non-response to watch this thing come on us. And as we see this week, it gets worse. Unexpectedly. Or maybe not so. I guess it depends on what you're aware of. I wasn't even going to touch this first story. It just, I don't know what, what else. What else can you say once you start reading and you read enough? When you see the history, what, what do you say about it? But then uh, the problem is it's fear-based, trauma-based type of programming that people respond to. And I'm noticing that. So the only reason why I'm going to really touch this subject is really to at least put out what I believe I see going on. So that because because we don't want to run from a fear-based condition, and we don't want to respond through that, and we want to put everything in its proper place, and then know what to look through, and then maybe what to address, and then more, more proper, and, and not from a position of fear. Where I go on, it's a BTW for this uh, segment here. It's a BTW RLM three five two. Those of you who want to get some links later, I want to thank uh, Grammy Mary over there at Spreaker allowing us to post there. For those of you that want to listen through Spreaker, certainly we have the RLM. We have, uh, I think, I think UCY is down. I noticed that the banners are down and the player didn't play, so I don't know if that's my browser or if UCY Jules has pulled that down. But Jules, if you are listening, you can uh, maybe send me a DM on Twitter. I can let me know what you've done there. Otherwise, you can go to the USCY TV's web YouTube, and uh, she posts the broadcast there once a week with some others, which is great. Thank you for that. Sound Mind, thank you for what you do over there, and all the folks contributing. And uh, over at Sound Minds, he puts up the links as I talk about them. I don't give it to them beforehand. They, they just listen. I try to read the, the title, and they pull it up, so if anybody wants to see some of the links ahead of time, I suppose you can go there. And so there's an integration going on, and I pretty, really appreciate the support to bring forward this information because, I, like I said last week, it's hindsight 2020 is, uh, I think we, we've seen enough. Enough is enough. Let's let's start taking the action. And the action we'll be taking, depending on what your subject matter of interest is, is what I've been telling you here, like, for at least 10 years when I've been broadcasting, whatever that year is, I don't know, and uh, before that, in trying to... Uh, get us past and through what was planned for us, that people still research and study instead of hitting today where they have us going on. And I think we'll see real quickly when I point this out, and part, part of the reason why I brought this up, I'm going to talk about this thing with we here in Iran, uh, just a little bit, was I hope people picked up the the reinstitution, re reintegration, and the re reuse after 19 or so years of of the trauma-based programming for people, and so they'll stay servient. And uh, what? Why the people? Why I go? To, I went to crickets. Why the people don't stand up and denounce this immediately, and then go after what has to be done to keep the peace in their in their country? I I don't even know. But anyway, there's a that's the human. I say the human condition. It's our animal nature. It's fallen. It seems to be the first thing that responds, and we don't have the sense enough to not let. Don't let that happen, but anyway, so uh, just my thoughts just kind of go all over. We heard here that there it's now the problem is I started seeing the first tag come out in Twitter was uh, World War Three, and this is where people are freaked out. And you know, we're dealing with psychopaths, so I suppose that could happen, but I want to bring this thing into a little bit more. When I saw World War Three trend immediately, I said, This is a setup. And we, those of us that are on this. The choir here understands it's most, most likely all the setup. We understand that what Smith, Smith, Bunt Act or Munt Act, it, it removed the restriction on prop, government propaganda or uh, government uh, media trying uh, being able to lie to you, working for the government, openly now, to advance agendas. And what we seem to miss is the historic place about this. And uh, so World War Three popped up. Everyone's all freaked up. We're going to World War. But that also, as I told you, there's possibilities and, and, and potentials, and I have categories. Nothing set in stone when you're dealing with uh, this psychopathy. 
relative to the psychopathy, there are some things that you can see that are set in stone. You just have to, that's the foundation you should be working for. But th this, um, there's news, the way it comes out is notice. I say it's notice to us. If we were to parse it correctly, we can start seeing the, the underlying story of what's going on. And the very first thing that struck me was the story that comes out later than when we hear that the United States attacks a military general in Iran. And I'm not, uh, because I, it may sound like I'm supporting the position of Iran, I'm not supporting necessarily Iran or their, their government or what they do to their own people. I've told you the Middle East is a carnival mirror that the United States, the people of the United States can look at if they understood what they're looking at and see what's happening over the, over, over on the Middle East is happening to them. In other, in other words, the government of the United States is a terrorist. It, it threw out the law of, and back in 9, 2010. I discussed that to you, with you in 2012. This is where we get that indefinite detention and they can execute you from anywhere. This is that, folks, if you didn't understand it. But uh, it, this is the first story that came up to show, that should have shown anybody who was looking what the real dynamic in this country is at this point, what we should have thrown off early on, what allows us to get entangled in these foreign entanglements. We didn't pay attention that when the uh, recent NDAA gave the president more power, uh, that it also funded more more attacks, that this was on the horizon. And uh, partly, and it's uh, kind of hard to discuss all these little points, and I don't want to get into a lot, so I just want to hit them and move. But this war, uh, World War Three, is a uh, thing that came out quick. I think they want us to focus on World War Three. But I want people to step back just a moment and think about what World War is. It requires lots of con countries involved. And you can look in the Middle East, just absently stare, and you can see lots of countries there. But if you look, there's some interestingly absent countries that years ago were said to have engaged, but they ended up not engaging, which would have brought that on this thing that they want to say is coming the World War Three, which other of you would say is Armageddon. And that's a potential impossibility that people are working through. Whether you agree with it or not is irrelevant. It's that they would agree with it. And if they're in the seat of power, they could push that agenda, which I think is a high possibility and probability. Whether or not they can change the times of uh, that the that in that view would be the creator, if they think they can guide the, the creator by by the creator's nose, I don't know, but uh, there's still to be a people are responding through that because that's their belief system. Uh, we see this very first report, Israel given advance notice of U.S. plan to kill Iranian G General Soleimani, the U.S. Congress left in the dark. I, again, I don't even need to read more of the story. Uh, just hear what's there, uh, and you see another non-country occupier of people, killers, was given notice before the Congress. And for the same reasons, I would have to say, this is almost like an inside joke. They didn't tell Congress like they wouldn't tell their enemies <laughs> uh, because this is, shows you the caucusocracy that's running the country at this point. And, uh, but Israel being given advance notice where Congress wasn't tells you there's a, this is moving through a different uh, condition. And so that brings up that issue of the biblical interpretation, which is what Israel interprets its authority. I've explained how that's all wrong or how peacefully they could make, could have made it right and can still make it right, but they choose not to, which shows again the deception. And we're told in that, in that uh, frame of work that we will be deceived. And we'll be continually deceived by these people, and these people are deceivers, and they can't do anything else, actually. So you, I would say you can pretty much take that to the bank. When I did that myself, it, it, things started to make a lot more sense. That the President of the United States gave Israel advance notice of the plan to kill an Iranian military officer and not give Congress the heads up is, a, is something that we all need to focus on in a way, uh, I guess focus only to the point of understanding, that there's a, we're looking at the tail wagging the dog here. So that, I guess, started my view on this, and again, seeing everyone talk to World War III and we're going to war. Now, I'm not going to say uh, that World War III couldn't happen, but again, look at the players. Look at whether the world is in there, and uh, some very important players of the world didn't show up, and they're not going to show up. 
And so even though it looks like the, um, let me say, the fovangelists in the government, the United States government, are pressing their fovangelism, evangelizing a condition, trying to hasten on a condition that is foretold to happen, and looks like it could always happen, the actual elements are not there at this point. And I just want to point out, because of the way the United States lies, that you, this is a, imposed by the United States. His law, my thought is, as long as Iran doesn't overtly attack anything in the United States, and they don't have to, this can't go to world war without the United States instigating it. And as I've told you before, when you start finding the pretense of something and you start identifying under color that they're acting to go hurt people or harm titles of people or rights or property, you have before you the evidence of crime, felony. In this case, it could live, rise to the level of treason if you just lay the elements of the action out. That everybody that's feared about the world war can properly respond against it as infirm as that sounds, people responding to a government that's a psychopath. That if this is becoming, I told you, it's going to take the mass of people to show up. They're starting to show up in a, against a war with Iran. That's not going to be really enough. It's the same problem I talked to you last week about doing the wrong thing in Virginia, going to sanctuary, instead of going right to the black and white, the Constitution, in four sections of the first part, you see exactly what you need to do. And everybody should be speaking in one voice on that, with the stated power that's in the black and white there as well. The Virginia Constitution was very interesting to me that it literally states in black and white, who the actual civil power comes when you have a failure of the government. And so I hope people listened to that or went and read some of this and, and saw that, because it's important to take that thought and bring it into this larger context of, of the United States being the terror. The, the war of terror is what they're waging. And so I'm, I'm waiting too much long time here. What comes out is that Israel gave, gave, was given the heads up about this before. They attacked this military uh, officer, and I don't, I mean, there's lots of words stating he was a murderer and all this other stuff. We've heard this story before. I don't have, know of anybody that's shown that he'd murdered United States troops, even though he was been involved in what? In a country that the United States invaded without right, that they, were, they, Iranians, were invited to protect the Syrians, if that's what we're talking about. This whole thing starts uh, also, interestingly, if not, if you don't, I think it's interesting for anybody who doesn't understand this. The uh, Iraqi PMU, which is a military mil uh, militia force in Iraq, uh, recognized, killed a commander of the Daesh, which is, uh, interestingly, the same group of people that the United States government supports and protects under the color that they're fighting terror. Because the PMU commander or did, did that, the United States attacked and killed him, which should sound very interesting to most people that are half listening. That starts this whole thing up where they then, the United States escalates this thing up to kill this military officer who was going to Iraq to go to a funeral of the people that were killed under the first attack. And so then we hear the nonsense coming out of, I say it's nonsense, uh, coming out of the United States government, the excuses. Pompeo even tweeting out, and they refer to this in this next story, that uh, Iran's foreign minister mocks Pompeo as an arrogant clown Saturday for posting a video of Iraqis carrying flags down the street in, in some number. not, not You can only see a narrow focus in the, in the frame. But they were celebrating the death of this military general. Or and Iranians in the street as well doing the same thing. But uh, the, uh, the Iraqis, I, I don't understand the language. I did hear the name Soleimani. Uh, but I didn't know what that was, but Pompeo's claiming that this was their celebration. In fact, this is the story that Iran's foreign minister mocks Pompeo as an arrogant clown. It was him saying that was not, that was them, the people, rising up to mourn the death, and they're going to coalesce. Now, that, that brings up another dynamic, which I know you all don't hear me talking to myself or my monitor, uh, but uh, things I'm looking at and deciding on what's going to happen here, I've already kind of worked that through. Iran doesn't have to attack anybody. As long as they don't attack anybody, as long as they went, they go smart like what Russia did to go into Syria and they defend and they keep that position, they can use all the people that are coalescing 
against the United States right now, within all the countries, in order to fight a different type of proxy war. That this doesn't go to world war. What this will be is the United States making war on Iran. People may fear it as a world war, but that's not really what's going to happen. This is just the deception, and the people are going to embrace it like they did everything, they've done everything else in the last 20 years relative to the war, what's called the brand of the war on terror. It's the war of terror. The plan for all this has long since been told to us, the domino effect that they were uh, telling us, that the plans I've been telling you is a right, the carnival mirror of the Middle East causing things to happen in the United States that the people are obli apparently oblivious to and won't respond to, why I went to crickets, is identified uh, through a uh, State Department official of the United States making that tweet was identified as be, being an arrogant clown by an Iranian foreign minister. is like unprecedented discussion. And in fact, he was. He is. And this is the, we've heard about clown world. We've heard the reflections of clown world in the United States and all the pictures periodically, especially around elections. This is the world we now live in. But the problem is there happens to be a government that's promoting all this. It's not law. It's not going to be law. I told you that was gone. I told you that was done when they threw out the Libra code in the 2010 murder memo. Remember? I talked about all of this. And so we come out and we hear that the Iran's foreign minister is explaining who uh, this State Department gentleman is. Remember, this CIA guy. This is a, Pompeo's a CIA guy. Okay? And he's, he made a statement at a, a Texas university. So I got a couple of tweets here to remind me. I posted in Based on this story of the Iran, Iranian foreign minister calling Pompeo an arrogant clown, it's way worse. This guy's, these guys are psychopaths. They may be faux evangelists. Faux evangelists are moving in a biblical thing forward. A biblical, they think it's a acceleration of a prophecy forward. And don't underestimate, whether you believe that or not, don't underestimate that being a driver. It's to promote it, in this case, to promote Israel promotes the end time, even though at the end, so-called Jews that we're told don't really believe it, what the evangelist is trying to get done under the color now of the United States power. This is plain. So now we have uh, the clown world where one Iranian foreign minister calls the Secretary of State a clown, an arrogant clown. We're now He's now wearing... These clowns are now wearing a patented Acme diplomat costume. It's D.C. And this is proven in the tweet of Pompeo saying, Iraqis, Iraqis dancing in the street for freedom, thankful to General Soleimani, no more. Could be further from the truth. But never forget, as I post also, you get any of these links you can see. A long time ago, I said, Caucasocracy 101 at Texas A&M University, Pompeo, quote, I was a CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we stole. Now, if you think it only happened when he was there, and you haven't looked at the history of Iran in the United States, you're missing a big deal. We've been at war with Iran since the Shah was kicked out in about 53. Okay? Uh, excuse me. He was put in in 53. Kicked out in about 79, I think it was. The economic harm that the United States has been putting on Iran is proof of, an economic, of a war. And if we're missing all this, we're missing who the belligerent here is and who is, what the dynamic is. Just because uh, this general was a bad dude, by any estimation, if that's true, and I mean, these people in this position, I can't believe any, none of them are free of all this taint anyway. Doesn't mean we go around killing all these, uh, the United States has the power to go kill all these people around the world. And if that was the focus, why hadn't they been doing that the whole time? Again, another dynamic, another thing to, to look at. But uh, Pompeo is again exposed, uh, and this is a big uh, psyop in my mind. It's trauma-based. Uh, it's deal dealing with CIA moving, as we know, the springs in. They've had trouble with Iran, so this is now they have to become more overt. The they attack a, uh, an Iranian agreeable ally in Iraq. Uh, again, they we attack the United States, attack that country under lies, on and on and on. They killed a commander that killed the Daesh, a terrorist a, a group, uh, took out that. The United States did. And now we have them killing the 
general, and we also had another rocket attack after that. And there was a question of whether this rocket attack would be, was it, did it come, well, what kind of a rocket, they talked Katusha rockets. There was no way that a Katusha rocket could be that accurate to hit the two vehicles that had these guys in it, of uh, the two vehicles that had these people that they were after in it. But they did say that there may have been a drone or a helicopter. These stories of question went on for about three days. Finally, all the pretense was dropped. It was sounds like it was a Reaper drone and was a targeted assassination. That even was a question. Now you hear just assassination. So, anyway, we see this is a lot more intense, a lot more uh, planned. Uh, Israel was told to the plan, so we know that this is outside of the pale of what nations normally do if diplomacy was a thing, a, a, a tool. That's what I told you a long time ago. That's been thrown out. There is no rule. And uh, so, but we know that by the words of Pompeo himself, I've told you, you don't have to surmise. It's better to get the confession out of someone's mouth, the criminal's mouth, than it is to have a question about it or work from hearsay. And so we hear that the CIA is involved. We know by history the CIA has been involved. We know that the war is involved. So anybody who starts saying war, 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 we're beating the drum of war, they missed that we've been in the war with the with Iranians. Now, my, my only touch to Iranian people was back in the 80s, I had uh, an older a couple, husband and wife, that uh, came from Iran because the Shah was displaced. And uh, they we talked, I talked with them at the time. I wasn't a geopolitically motive understanding. I just know things were going on in the world. I read, I watched the news, I could see it. Well, they were there because of, uh, they were displaced because the Shah was displaced. But the, they were not, they were not, terrorists. They were not, uh, these people were very intelligent. They were doing something outside of their normal age group, I would say, in a technical field. Uh, and uh, they were peaceful people. I mean, we just talk and have a good conversation. And I got to admire uh, their, and the way they think. All right, so if, that's my only touch to Iranian people. The people, not the politics. That I don't think that I've never, and I've always been of a mind, uh, that you don't go around telling, just killing people. You don't set up conditions to kill people, which is now my prejudice in looking at this whole condition. That when you tell uh, an, inter an international trespasser, such as the Israelis, a plan that you have to go kill a, an, another country's, a legitimate country's m m military uh, official, who really you can't prove, I don't think anybody has shown that there's any evidence he killed anybody. Yes, he's a general. Generals kill people through what? Their proxies and soldiers should send us a message about the United States is setting up to do against its own people and willing to do when we see Title 50 and willing to do when we see the murder memo now falling out. And now we get to the point, now the trauma-based situation that was instituted, I told you about in 9-11, where they said America changed, didn't change America, but everyone believed that it did, is being reinstituted. That we're dealing with another way of, uh, if you will, the CIA playing their lies. The United States is involved. Trump uses this stuff. He, he went to the campaign saying that Obama would, would attack Iran to win an election. In a way, he doesn't even need this war to win that election. From what I can tell, the dynamic of this, he's all with Teflon Don right now, the way it works. The stupidity that the Democratic Party's been playing. But this is not about that. This is about what? Israel. That's why they were given, the Israelis were given first up. And this is that there's another plan over that whole region relative to, to the Israelis. Their claim is biblical. Do not underestimate what the, what the uh, Protestant uh, politics in power right now may be doing to hasten all that. The world war? I don't know. I don't think so. Interestingly, big important players are not in the Middle East to make it a world war. You do see factions, but you don't see them everybody... This is a proxy war at this point. This is not the nations coming in and fighting. Are we at war with Iran? We have been. So that's not even new. Will that create... I hear words about selective service and all that came right up. It's been coming up, folks. When they, I told you, I did the report. The women were included in all that. I said, "Come, something's coming, and you're all going to be fodder if you don't step up and decide what you need to do as a people. Like Virginia. Take your sovereign power, the Virginia stat the Constitution says you have, Find the maladministration. As I've explained to you, you can find in the immunity clause there, you can do it to the United States government itself. And not just protest with a sign. Start imposing yourself as a sovereign people with a proper word in your mouth. 
in the proper segment of proper proofs, the proper record made. As a mass of people is different than what I heard the objections to what I was saying, but what difference does this make? Well, it's mass of people. I told you that's to the point. Even the Constitution recognizes the majority of the community. I told you that was going to have to happen. Not just a few people, the mass of people. And so, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but the Selective Service was telling us that they were coming to take your kids on whatever trumped up thing that they were going to do. Can't tell the future. Can't tell we're not going to go to what they call a world war. But I'm asking you to take a step back and look at the players. Are they all really there? Are we all of a sudden making war? Or is, is Iran going to cause a war? No, the United States has been waging war since they lost the Shah. And everybody's been agreeable to that. Everybody, even myself, by not maybe saying something somewhere, at least voicing. Well, I'm doing it now. I have been doing it. On the Twitter, I voice certain things. I don't say a lot. I try to say things that people should be contemplative of and think about. And I would hope tweet or you know, retweet so that other people can see it. But there's no response to all this stuff. And so we foment the fear. And we know, and I know that's you know, trauma-based fear is what we all start working on, and they work on us actually, and then we we capitulate just because of how we are, how we're wired. I don't know why that is, and I'm not immune from it. But I mean, the first thing is you you learn not to just start running with the crowd. Don't run with the lemmings. I used to use that that analogy a long time ago. If we wanted to find out more about what the CIA does. I just found a little article, history.com, whatever these people, propagandists are, I don't care. I just want to look at what the uh, facts are. You can prove out all the facts. And this is a difference, I guess, for me. I don't tell you what to do. I say, this is where you should go look. If you uh, Here's a path to go down. You're going to have to do the work to do the study. I'm not telling you to really do anything. I am asking you to get active in a proper way, get action-oriented in a proper way. I think once you read the facts and understand it, and you get active, you'll be making the right decisions. I don't see, we all may have to work together to do, to engage quicker, more properly, but uh, that's not, that's not, uh, I'm not uh, ordering you around. You need to be edu educate yourself. It's an educated masses that properly acts, vigilant in the proper ways. We can go quickly to CIA-assisted coup overthrows government Iran. And it tells you the history of the Shah from 1951. I can go, I'm not going to read it. You can go and read it. You, anybody who's read this understands it. And the ousting of the Shah by 1950, uh, excuse me, no, I keep saying it, 1979, I think it is. In fact, I'm, I'm talking to some Iranian, Iranian couple, I think it was in 1981. So they moved pretty quickly to get out of uh, what's deemed to be an oppressive regime, which is actually their, demo, their democratically, uh, if you can call it democratic, that's the way those people do their business regarding politics. I don't have a, it's not for me to say about that. Oppression is in every government. The the, the religion of, of government is everywhere. And that's, you know, I don't know what to say more about that. And it's then you take, you just have to take the best of the, the religion of government that you have and throw out every, throw everybody out of the temple, so to speak, that's no good for it and focus on the things that are good until we can take a better handle of it. That's why I tell you about going to the law of the land, not not the law of the land like you see in the Constitution, but the, the land disposal is tells us more power, how it gives us more power. And as I move this thing through, we're going to get to a land issue that I can show you how people do it wrong, pretty clearly. And no one notices it, and they're they're the ones taking the action. Is our problem as a society. The carnival mirror of what's going on over there, reflecting what's happening in, in the Middle East is what's happening to us. But it's distorted, so you don't see it as the same thing. It's the same effect, though. You have so, There's a powers in the United States that are, and it's not just the CIA. It's not just what we think is caucusocracy or the swamp. It, it's There's multiple attacks going on, uh, one of which I will tell you is this consensus nonsense. You, you know it as the sustainable development. It's a different style, but they all will tie together. And so, to me, that looks like another military tool as well. And if it wasn't started out to be, military is using it for that when you start seeing what goes on. It starts easy. You can easy uh, easy to put this stuff together. So, CIA, you want to find a little bit about Iran? CIA-assisted you know, coup overthrows the government of Iran. Overthrew it. And then they took their own place back, however, hook by hook, by crook, whatever happens. And the United States hasn't been, hasn't been happy about it since. That's all that's really going on. Is that world war? I don't think so. Can you be brought up to believe it's a world war so that you get your people to join up 
to go help die for Israel, the Israelis? Sure. Do they want this to be a world war fervor? Sure. They want you afraid. Do they want to deal with people like me and call us the, what, I don't know what you call it, We'd be disgraced by my opinion? Sure they want that. They want everybody who is sold into the religion of government, that is that is actually the caucusocracy, to be able to have be another voice against those of us that are saying, listen, there's there's a there, there is a peaceful way to address that. You don't invade other people's territory. Because here's the problem: if I agreed that every nation has the right to go invade every other one, I am mil I am advocating against my own property rights. Oh, that's a big deal. You know, that a lot of countries don't have that. And so I don't want to get lost there. So CIA-assisted coup overthrows government Iran. You can read about it. This has been a festering wound for the United States since uh, we've been in there. I mean, this story goes before 50s. It's like it starts, goes back to the, you know, Britain and oil and all that. And that's what happened also. The There was an overthrow for the oil as well, uh, attacking Western, Western things. You can read it all yourself. This is not new. It's being made new. What I find interesting is they're using the same tactics to get you to agree. And to do what? The carnival mirror of what's going on, the devastation that's going on over in the Middle East, is devastation that's happening in the United States, but in a in a different way. And we get the words right out of their mouth, which is why I'm going to bring this up here. It's a short little 55-second video. I hope it plays right, I mean, as far as the audio. And listen very carefully. And I want you to think as they're talking about it. Let's say, de facto state of war. Mayor warns New Yorkers a new reality after Soleimani killing. A new reality. Remember when 99, 2001, 9-11, they said America had changed? Well, now we're living in a new reality. This comes days within that attack. This is so well orchestrated again. It, it's really scary that we don't pull the, figure this out. But let me, don't take it from me. Listen to uh, and uh, listen to the implication of the fear of being a victim to a boogeyman within the statement here, without any proof, without any re re relation to reality, without any capacity other than pointing to the dereliction of the government to allow it, that turned around and turned this place like the detortification of the United States through the deindustrialization, de like the war, the Turkey went and robbed at the beginning of the war in Syria, the well, the attack on Syria, they robbed all their industrial infrastructure. Same thing, Carnival Mirror reflected detroitification of America. The rights degradation, the destabilization of the failure of the people to keep their rights uh, with our 2010 murder memo, your rights to preserve yourself against an indefinite detention or outright murder extrajudicially. Okay, all this is playing. There's no law. I told you this years ago. No law. It went extrajudicial. They even threw Libra code to the curb, if you'll remember that broadcast. But here's a here's a statement right out of the the beast the mouth of the beast out of New York, claiming to be the only place to be attacked. If the only if the primary case was supposed to be New York, why did the entire United States go into uh, the, a, a presumption that every one of you was an enemy combatant? Why did every place that someone takes a picture now become a, a problem? Is this trauma-based thing coming? Now they're going to tell New Yorkers. It's the capital of the world, remember, that you're a victim here. You don't have any, any kind of uh, protection except by what we will help you with. Now, here it is. Here's what he says. We are now potentially facing a threat that's different and greater than anything we have faced previously. As of last night, we are dealing with a different reality. And I said it last night. We're in, at this point, a de facto state of war between the United States of America and Iran. But we have never confronted in recent decades the reality of a war with a government of a large country with an international terror network at its behest. And no one has to be reminded that New York City is the number one terror target in the United States. I'm saying this because New Yorkers deserve to know that we've entered into a different reality. We entered into a different reality. No different, if you will, in different words. And America changed after 9-1-1. That was New York being attacked. That's the fear and terror. What is the largest terror network in the United the government that has the largest terror network but the United States government? Uh, the people get need to know. Need to know what? 
need to know what these people tell you or that you need to find out about how you're being played. We need, again, hindsight's 2020. I'm hoping Operation Hindsight 2020 becomes something in this next decade for the people to stay enough is enough. I don't, I don't see why that we see the game plan being repeated. The reality is, has, I just told I just explained a reality. Has that reality changed? No, it's only changed because he says so. No, it hasn't changed because of that either. No reality has ever changed. Everybody's doing what they've been doing. It's up to you to accept it or not. All right, so you ha you can buy into this. You can go the fear. You can be protected by what you think your oath to your country is, or you can listen to the find out that the Pompeo, the, the, the Secretary of State now, not in the CIA, but now in the, in the ambassador of the United States, will, uh, says they lie, cheat, and steal. And it's proven. I don't even need to hear him say that, but that you hear him say that. How do you, how do you disregard that confession? I uh, retweeted on some of this, on this thing, uh, a comment. Some of this I preserve just to hopefully someone reads it and points out, keep your mind uh, more stabilized than what you're seeing. Don't let it be pulled around. I say the Middle East carnival mirror I speak of in this video, the government of a large country with an international terror network at, network at its behest is the United States government itself, which is willing to act against the people of the USA. 50 USC, War of Terror, Libra Code, Cockestocracy 101. Go back. 50 USC is what? That's your War Department statutes in the United States Code that make exceptions for the government to do harm to all of you all, which they're using. And don't, don't forget, there's a note about the attachment that attaches to the fiscal power of the government, and also that ends up going to the War, tra war um, Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917, the First World War. And so let's compare what they're doing with Iran with the World War, and you'll see that doesn't even go uh, match up. But you'll see the authority that's actually being used, the murder memo of which took away every question that they were going to use every exception in Title 50 to make war on the people of the United States of America. Understand what I just said. I hope you picked up when I said United States and then went to USA. U.S. and USA are different. They are connotatively and contextually as well. U.S. is a government. It has a place, but it's a government. The United States of America is the union of countries that pulled together for a more perfect union, which was destroyed by Lincoln, another lawyer. And we've been living a new day on that, too. America changed then. Okay, we're not talking about that one. That turned the war against the people, and now you have civil rights, Title 42, Section 1981. Do I have to go through the lineage? Yeah, I guess I could, but I'm not. I'm just telling I'm just tell you, this stuff just goes right into my mind and comes out with all these codes come out about the qualification of how you can identify this thing is not what we're being told. Now we can buy into this hysteria or hysteria and we could buy into the fact that they're promoting it's World War Three or if we look at the reality. We need some major players to come into the Middle East that I don't see any reason for them to step in right now. We do see some co some alliances that still split the matter, but they're all coming in through proxies. Does that mean that World War Three doesn't all of a sudden show up? No, because I'm not <laughs> And I don't have that insight, but I'm not I'm not being impressed with the the statement that because Iran had a uh, is who they are that all of that the United States says so that we're into world war. So I think we need to start looking through that. We we can look and see who the who the instigator is. That's the people of the United States' job to start coming back, however they can, however infirm and feeble that may sound. That's uh, for us to do. I don't know what people don't like to hear that, but that's really what this is. So we have the history that says this is not what we're being propagandized with. I'm saying take note of that. There are some real threats here. But it's up to the people of the United States to start cutting through the nonsense. And not like I was looking at a video about the Virginia thing again. You know, they come through and I look at them. Talking about some old dude, the ideas of an old dude, correct as they were, but never claiming the power of what the old dude said in the current black and white. If you understand, you're you're looking and pointing at someone else in past and never claiming for yourself that posterity is not the same as pointing to the old dude's statement and saying that was a good idea. You have to claim that 
and point to the objective basis that you have as the power. Now, once we start doing that and start speaking more clearly on that through that power, as a mass of people now, not divided, house that divided shall not stand, right? We told all this stuff, and we, we give it all lip service. I mean, that's in the Bible as well. If you want to keep it in the context of Israelis getting notice first, their standard is the Bible. The United States just helped that. And I say that's the faux evangelism that's trying to bring on the Messiah that the, the, the Jews themselves don't even agree with. It's an interesting dynamic as well. Pretty deceitful all the way around. At any rate, I don't want to get too lost. That is a possibility. I guess I'll just close there. That even though it's dangerous what we're seeing in the world, I'm saying that danger may not be what it is. It's being used as a fear tactic to come back to home and steal more of your life and your way of life and your freedoms. And this ties back to about everything else I've ever tied in. With. Gets, you have the Internet of Ideas, you have 5G come in, and we need to keep track of everybody now down to every moment because it's a different reality. They don't define that reality. And they lie to you about that it's different. It didn't. It wasn't different. It's all the same. And so we can believe all this stuff. Or we can start taking, uh, re reinstituting our power and acting more direct. And I guess that's, I don't know what more to say. I, this can go wild. I don't think it goes the way we're being propagandized to. And so I wanted to, I guess, all this time I just want to be on record to tell you, calm down, step back, look at the facts, point out the real wrongdoers. And don't let no, don't let them point to someone else's wrongdoing when they're the ones doing the wrongdoing. And then don't integrate yourself with a problem that's not yours. And unless it has an extension that can affect you, that's not really a political stake, uh, stocking horse. At some point, there's just only so much that people can do in nations. That's partly how this place has been wired and divided. But to come inside a place like the United States, which I can see is pretty powerful within the, in the, in the, in the sense of the people being powerful and having, even in this late date, an objective basis to point to, to find that out for us. And we don't exercise that is really shame on us. So you know, we could go, we could go with the propaganda. We can believe people like Pompeo. We can disregard the, the past. We can continue the revolution by allowing the wheel of history to come around. But well, we can break that, as I've said, break the wheel of revolution. Don't let it come around like that. Stop it, break it, and then go down with the more fundamental principles that we actually need that really was what helped us. Lying doesn't help us. Cheating doesn't help us. Stealing doesn't help us. Invading other people's lands doesn't help us. It certainly doesn't help us when someone like myself looks and says, well, that's a cons as it reflects back to us, that's a contorted view of what they're doing to us. Because this official, who's a politician, says the reality changes, did it? Or are you just going to buy into it? That's public buy-in. That's consensus. That's not reality. You've just bought into the sustainable development nonsense. You've bought into right what, where, what people that are controlling you by the nose want you to be. And so we're gonna, I think you know, we have a lot more responsibility in, in all this. If all that we can do right now is talk about it, it's going to continue. If we can take all the, there's people out there, I saw the pictures, if they're true, I have to even think about if they're true. Uh, they're signboards. Is essentially, I told you signboarding. I've done it. We did it for years. It didn't really, it, it caused some awareness, but it didn't really cause the change that we, I shifted to start to become to do is what I tell you now behind what should we do in different capacities. And I have to say, well, for all the negative of the world war and the propaganda and the promotion of world war and the war with Iran and all the negative all that is, uh, my colleagues and I, we were talking the last few week or so, not necessarily as a obvious we're trying to reflect on 2019, but the, the dialogue kind of turned in the, you know, what we've been doing and where we're going. And I'm telling you, the momentum is shifting. It just takes a while. It's just building effort, effort, effort put in, and then finally it reflects back out. It's the proper effort in. It's the proper reflection. You put a contorted effort, a lie, a deception in, you get a deception out as a reflection. You may not even recognize it. You may not even recognize the reflection on you of something. And uh, anyway, I don't know if people can appreciate that. I don't know if I really feel sometimes I'm talking in another place because I don't see the reflection. Some of you I do. I mean, it, don't say that's not out there, but it's just so few.
And so, I, so, so much fret and row and fear, and that's the tool. And they just reinstituted it. De Blasio just reinstituted it again on you folks. And so, take note of that that method. It works. It works over and over. The revolution is history repeating itself. And hindsight's twenty twenty. Why isn't enough enough? And we break that revolution, that wheel. So that that history doesn't repeat itself. As I've been asking, find the better, more foundational principles of the country in the United States that we live in. It really is unique. Grasp those with two, both hands and make sure nobody encroaches as we learn how to come back, claw ourselves out of the stinking abyss that's been built up around us. By these people that have an agenda that, sure, I cannot have a hard time being able to disregard the, if, if you've got a group of people, that are wanton war criminals and occupiers in a country that the biggest bully in the world supports. And these people that, are, that claim a certain authority, you go look inside that authority, says they're deceivers and going to deceive, and the biggest bully supports that. You folks that are being represented by that big bully are in some serious trouble. And I come along looking after 20, 30 years of this stuff, looking how it comes down, with my how I, I didn't lie to myself, folks. I can just tell you that. I think that's what my, why I'm okay. I listen. I look at myself. Why am I right more than not? If even wrong once yet, I've told you about that standard. Is this very principle applied that you look at the foundation? You don't lie to yourself and you don't lie to others, and you make your own decisions first that are not built on sin. And then I look at that, para, if you call that a parable, or that, that wisdom, and I look out in the world, and someone else is using that same source to support a deception, and the same source saying a deception will come. And it's your decision, you're, you have to learn to discern. That when I see people getting afraid, and I see de Blasio coming out and flipping that switch again, 19 years after they did it the first time, I have to come to tell you again, this is such an important point, I'm repeating myself again, this broadcast. It's such an important point that you understand that is a method of, it's a method of control, it's a method of destru your destruction. And it's time, I say folks, enough is enough. Hindsight is 2020. If, if I need to say this is the year, this is a nice year to do that. It says 2020. Hindsight should be enough. We break these revolutions, these history, histories repeating themselves that are harming generations of people and going to harm generations of people. You know, I think, okay, so moving on. 2019, looking back, someone did a, a, from Mises, a, did a, a look at this new gun thing. You know, they need to take a lot of your guns. It's partly why there's an attack going on and always has been. And a disarmed society is a slave society, if not worse, actually. There is actually a position that's worse, <laughs> a couple of them. But a look back, it came up, and I just want to touch quickly on this. It uh, was a bad year for, uh, 2019 was a bad year for the only cops should have guns uh, narrative. Well, uh, government being the religion that it's become, and the police being actually military enforcers of that, because your reality continually changes. See, how did, the other thing is, he's a political officer. How did reality change when his view has to come from the Constitution, which didn't change? So he's speaking even outside of his own authority, right there, if people don't recognize that. These are colors of authority that create, if they create alarm, can be, can be argued as elements to, to extortion and coercion. Malfeasance in office, whether by omission or commission, that become maladministration, if I wanted to use the Virginia Constitution standard for the majority of the community to respond in their independent right as sovereign power. We all have these things if we would just step up into them. That it was looked at, the only gun, co only cops have guns narrative is being blown out. They reference this thing, this Christ, this West Freeway Church in, of Christ in Texas shooting. I'm not going to talk again too much on this more. I guess to me it's self evident what this thing should be. I'll just, everyone should have, that's capable, should have a concealed, concealed, uh, could, could, should carry concealed. 
We shouldn't have the government telling you it's okay when you have an inherent power to carry uh, a, an arm to defend yourself and your, your community itself. And yet we tolerate this nonsense as well. So that's my position. Y'all should be able to so-called concealed carry, but without that commercial permit. Where do I get that? Well, the permit in every state is defined as a permission to do a commercial trade, occupation, or profession. Go read your own statutes. It's right there in the black and white. I don't have to make this stuff up. You might have to. I don't. So that's what the permit is about. Why is your right to bear arms conditioned to a commercial license when it's an inherent power? How do I know that? The Virginia Constitution says so. If I didn't have any other constitution in the world to tell me, and I didn't have a scruple one about my antecedent rights, I'm being told by the Constitution, boy, I should move to Virginia, because it says it right there. Well, we all have sister state, if you will, sister state free foothold, foothold here. Everyone's equal that way, and so you see that it's all the same. But there was a discussion here, I'd like to uh, offer the link, that the only cops should have guns narratives is being destroyed. I want to use this story, to, you can read, you can see all the rationale behind it. I want to use it as the hindsight, Operation Hindsight 2020 action plan to see, you can take this list of the balance of how gun control doesn't work and all the reasons that private people save themselves, if you will, when cops couldn't get there, and that this assertion that there should be only one, the government officials or should have the guns, is clearly contrary to your inherent power. You don't need a constitution, actually, to, to discuss this. That until we start, we stop the line right there and don't allow these people to have an opinion against it, it's going to be continued. I told you, don't argue with the lunatic. You have to not go into the alternative. You have to base your system on a foundation and then challenge their title to say anything about it. One thing I did want to do uh, mention about this West Freeway Church of Christ shooting. Someone walked into a church over some time to got a shotgun and killed two people. A third uh, gentleman shot, who was a security officer, killed the guy. There have been lots of twisting about that, but I want to point out something that's not maybe so obvious. I did tweet about this, although I won't have a link for it. You can check my feed if you can find it. I can't find it, some of the stuff I do, so I don't even know where to get it. But at any rate, I want you to notice that the guns are also not a guarantee. They're just a tool. Sometimes you can use them, and sometimes you can't. Sometimes someone can use it faster than you. Talk about quick draw. Could talk about the Wild West. It still is. The, the criminal who had a burden of not murdering anybody went and murdered people. So that's the other side, the gun control activists' problem. Though there was a law that prohibited that, and it didn't stop it. We need a more immediate response. But I want to point out something in the video that you can find. I didn't get a link to that, but you can find it. Notice that the whole thing only took six seconds to resolve. And yet, within about three seconds, two people die. Or four seconds. Within three seconds, somebody who has a gun dies. And he does a couple things that we can take an object lesson from. That in three seconds, you can have a gun and it not be sufficient and or effective that I don't there's a whole lot behind this gun thing that I think gets lost for those of us that believe we have the right to self-defense and it's not a belief it's the inherent power we use it or we best we can we exercise what we can again we still in that gulf of problem uh, we have to take notice having a gun wasn't necessarily effective uh, someone who decided to have a gun didn't think ahead, and this is the object lesson, that he might have decided to do a couple things he ought not have done that took 3.3 seconds that his, that his attacker could affect for himself in 3 seconds, not 3.3. And what I want to point out here is the gentleman was sitting down, and he has a gun in his waistband behind him in his belt. He ends up taking two grabs at the gun while he's standing up, facing a guy with a shotgun, pointed at another guy. It was probably not the smartest thing to do, not to dismiss or judgment him. He was doing what he thought in the moment. Six seconds is not a lot of time. Three seconds is even less. That he stood up while he's grabbing for his gun, making himself a target, and couldn't grab the gun quick enough to get it out in order to stop the assailant. And he had a swing in his arm, that was coming out to do his protection, and the other guy shot first. 
And I want us to understand that, the, yes, the guns are, are there and they can are effective. These dynamics we have to put in our mind are maybe quicker than we've ever conceived. And a lot of times that's what I think about. What are the scenarios I may find myself that I may have to respond to? When do you fold them and when do you show them? How do you show them? I think, though I can't say, after the fact, standing up was probably not the right thing. Maybe discreetly grabbing his weapon might have been better, but discreetly. And so, I want, again, I just want to point out, this is a serious problem. It's not really just about people attacking your right to defend yourself. They don't have the right and title to do that. That's how you should stop them. But more importantly, when this stuff is coming down and it's promoted in the government by the government to happen, and we know the FBI foments this stuff. We don't even know this was not a setup that way. Get some crazy guy to go do something. That we have to have an immediate response, but that choice that we make may not actually work. Someone with a gun died that night. And so, I don't, don't want to rest in peace. That was a terrible thing to have to face. But I think we need to really look at this, given the government has set this up by their dereliction, we now live in a land of terror. And now de Blasio says the reality has changed. I'm not sure why all you all who have, say you have a Second Amendment right, which actually should be the right of your constitution in your state, like I pointed out, Section 13 of Virginia, not the Second Amendment. That's the federal. If you're a federal citizen, that's what your right is there. Now through the 14th, which you have to mention. But your right is inherent. It's inside before the government gets started. To defend yourself firstly and then defend the rest of yourselves together. Giving no title to anybody to argue. They, it's choice, their choice is not to carry. That if we live in this land of dereliction of the government to protect you, and now the new reality is, is this terror can come from Iran everywhere, like... The canoes and ATGAT guns from Daesh was told to us all for 20 years, before, 19 years now before, but we were going to get assailed by the is-is coming in, invading the United States. Now it's the new reality. Now Iran can show up magically. And yes, they can have cells, I suppose. This is what the art of asymmetrical warfare is. But who started it, first of all? then I don't know what the other additional problem to all y'all that think you have even a Second Amendment right is not is to add, if and since we're in a new reality that terror can pop up anywhere, you can't deny my right to conceal carry. I don't need a stinking permit. It's, I don't know why it's not on the lips of everybody. Government want to go there? We go there better. And so, going off too far on what I was going to say, we don't use what they hand us to counter what they do against us. We're enamored by the carnival mirror of entertainment that we're given. And that needs to stop. That history revolution needs to stop. We need to break that. And so, a little bit off the point about this. But remember, somebody with a gun died in that thing. Someone with a gun stopped the crime immediately. Six seconds long before police, the military of the government, would come there to do who knows what. Should be an object lesson of why and how we don't have to listen to this article says the, the narrative about only cops should have guns still allows the narrative. Even though they lay out a nice theory, if you will, logic, if, if you will, uh, facts for sure, of how you can bring out and make an argument, I'm saying stop the argument. You have an inherent power, each of you. Whether you exercise that is not up to me or the government or anybody to decide. It's not up to anyone to decide. And therefore, no one has the right to make the question and divest you of your right and your property in the gun and the right to have and to keep and bear, just like even the Virginia Constitution says, and to acquire, which it says. And I'm not talking Virginia. I'm talking all y'all that understand, I mean, that listen, that understand we have a private right ahead of the government, before the government, antecedent in the government, that no one has the title to confess, to assert a title to take away or hand to someone else your inherent power. This article says that there is a narrative of some people that have no right, unwarranted, to try and hand the right to some other group of people called cops is a felony, if you uh, would listen to what I'm saying for you. I get a little bit irritated here. It's such a simple 
elemental black and white copy and paste condition. We don't have to allow the narrative. It's a, absolutely ridiculous. It's like every other consensus narrative I say. I've told you about and how to defeat it. And so I'm going to move on because it's not going to maybe get me any further. You have to stand up and not allow an a challenge to things that are inherent to you. Demand their title to say so. Demand their power through that unwarranted title to transfer to someone else the right or take yours away. Why is that so hard for us to figure out? We do that method. There's a couple more you can throw in if you want. But for my broadcast time with you, three points would be sufficient to make give you the power. Every one of you. And I can, I, can, I can lay that out and literally speak it in 20 seconds when I'm focused on the point. Every one of you can. As I've told you, let me give you three minutes at a, at a commission meeting. Well, you can destroy them in three minutes if you know, no, don't get off on, don't talk about old dudes' ideas and actually attach the thing that's already black and white to you and say that they didn't have the right to, by omission or commission, to take away or hand it to someone else. You caught them in felony. Well, I just did that, what, not even 12 seconds, I guess. Did anybody have a stopwatch there? Yeah, okay, so you landed a couple more elements, you get yourself to 20 seconds, and you've nailed them in 20 seconds, but you have three more minutes, to, you have two minutes and 40 seconds to keep nailing them with. I hear the inspiration of what people are inspired by. I hear the old dudes that give us the, the incentive to say that, the, say that it's there. I don't hear anybody claiming it. I don't hear anybody stopping the, the, someone who wants to bring a bad argument up front, say that's not even right, you have to make the argument, and have the better information to shut it all down. Now, that takes a little more work, I suppose. You have to understand and know something more than what you think you know. And, uh, and maybe that sounds like I'm arrogant again, but no, I, I know that just from practice. And uh, that kind of brings me on to this next story. I'll move on here. What, what upstanding citizen believe versus what crazy conspiracy theorists believe. And this is written by Caitlin Johnstone. You go through and read it. She's always making some sense. I also notice she has a, a twist to her that I, I, don't, I don't agree with, but that's okay. I have no problem with people to have, they have their opinion. She's vocal about what she sees. She's not wrong at the moment that she's trying to make a distinction between what people who buy into the government religion, and she starts out every sentence, crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists believe the mature worldview requires skepticism toward power. Smart, upstanding citizens believe the government is your friend and the media are its helpers. She, she her, writes her whole article based on this duality, the crazy, stupid conspiracy theorist believes versus the smart, upstanding citizen belief. Well, uh, you know, there's a lot of connotations I tell you about what smart is anymore. Smart ain't too intelligent. Not that point. She goes on and says a whole lot of stuff, and I got done reading that, intelligent as it sounds, and I'm noticing something about that. This goes back to knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge can be powerful and usually is powerful. Uh, especially when it's applied, knowledge is applied properly. What I've been telling you behind the woodshed, the lessons I hope you would pick up to go bring someone else behind your own woodshed to get worked out. My response to this article on the title, which sound trying to try to pose the, the so-called upstanding citizens' beliefs versus what they would consider as a crazy conspiracy theorist relief, is that I wanted to make the continuous point that smart smart people are not too intelligent. I threw in this hashtag spy crickets. Again, we're talking about being their own uh, de destruction and being in action to it. Their own spy, if you will. It's hard to, uh, this is a hard analogy, but you, you're not responsive and you're, you will give intelligence that's not proper like you are a spy in your own country and still not respond. And yet, here are these people, these are the people that think they're, upstanding citizens that she calls. But I also found as I read through, smart may not be too intelligent, but on the other hand, I see no more clearly being crazy, stupid conspiracy theorists doesn't cure apathy or improper action. To me, this story became one of someone who is intelligent and will tell us the dynamic, but won't tell us anything on taking action. That the two, the, again, the how you divide the people out and how you, that you divide them out is a problem, but that you just allow, you support one position of a divided condition 
does not cure that condition and does not address the problems that she would list that are intelligently po proposed by those so-called conspiracy theorists. Nothing that a so-called conspiracy theorist believes means anything because the conspiracy theorist continues that uh, believe that as a s information sponge they can sit and receive this information to be so uh, so intelligent because they know and in fact that's a false uh, false premise because you know of a thing doesn't solve a thing and so i found that her and this is the problem i see with these uh, these politically minded people that write things and you try to stand on one side or the other or protect the side that you might be on because you've been harmed, it allows the other side the argument that isn't valid. Uh, similarly, as I said before, why do you allow anybody to challenge a gun right that's inherent to you? Any official that does that brings themselves into a felonies. Why don't you speak that way? It's not that I told you, I just did it. If you go back here a few minutes, Within 20 seconds, I laid out a very quick scenario that, yes, you'd have to go back in your statute to your state. Yes, you'd have to go find out what the penal code says for extortion and uh, coercion. They, well, again, remember, extortion is of the pop property itself, and coercion is of the right. A lot of people miss that little thing, but they're different, and so they're the, but they pertain to things. They're pertinent to each other. Together, they can be said to be said it's felony of conversion. Why don't we speak this way in front of a face of a so-called authorita? Everybody else that's just an opinion has no title and power. You just shut them down there. Why do we get in an argument? And anyway, so the same thing here. You can divide the people between the conspiracy theorists and smart citizens, or you because you're you're a conspiracy theorist, as the smart citizen said. But you feed into that that false um, argument, and you never never approach the and, and solve the underlying things you actually believe or know to exist and so I just wanted to smart lady I'm sure but we, we, we don't get to the action phase and we really have to right now it's if you didn't think all of a sudden you know, New Year's is a new a new war and you all think it's a new war and going to World War 3 something that's been going on for decades and decades and all of a sudden now it's of interest you're missing it you're missing it and you've been in a probably likely ineffectual other places, but that's, you know, and then I sound like I'm judging you, and I'm, I'm not really judging you. It's just a fact. It's just a statement of fact. And so we move on now. I'm going to move on to how we uh, understand things and why it's, under, it's important to not just know a thing, but properly do something. Along this, this whole idea of, of us, you know, that we need to take what we've learned certainly in the last 19 or so years, and now apply it, as I've been saying. And I say as I've been saying, because there's a way that you can do it. You just continue the argument. You allow the other side to have an argument instead of shutting it all down and getting to the core of what is really supposed to happen. Also continues, and I see this repeatedly, but this also continued in another report, another story, that actually I was given, I think Vin E. gave this to me in the chat, weeks and weeks ago. It, interestingly how it develops over the time I get it back from a colleague of mine in a conversation uh, that I still haven't figured out is exactly the same but it, it brought up another problem relative to those of us in the United States not understanding our property rights not doing the wrong, right thing and those that have no right can take us out they can take away what we own and it all looks official and it, it, it's so subtle yet it's so obvious now it's not obvious to those that haven't seen it because they're doing the wrong thing and uh, so I, need, I guess I can prove I'm not really so arrogant. I hope you all will see the same problem on its face when I say it. And as I develop this little story that uh, was a, about a road closure. And we're talking about our rights and properly do it, responding. Not just talking, oh, I have a right and this and that. But no, actually understanding what it is. Understanding the, the terrain, the battlefield that's been created likely. And or who the players are. And really, what you need to participate, what you need to do versus what you're told to do, and how to discern what that isn't what you need to do, notwithstanding the authorita that tells you that. And so, this is an object lesson for me to look at this thing. Like I said, I, I may have gotten this back through this very thing. I uh, this road close this gate. It's a gate decision uh, that was made. 
it, it really affects everybody as far as understanding about your property rights, your right of ingress and egress. I can bring up the patent issue like I keep telling you about. It's how to maintain your territory so that there's not an invasion coming from foreigners that have no right. The carnival mirror of the Middle East is real, folks, whether you can quite grasp what I've been saying. It reflects us as a society in a distorted way, what's going on in the Middle East. And it's actually just, if I will, I can take the mirror away until you see that. I can take the mirror away. It is all peoples being controlled by foreign powers and not asserting their own power or not able. And that's the shame about the people of the United States. At least in print and by mass, we have something that peoples around the world may not have. And I say that in an extent where we would rely as the mass on the black and white, where if you look at the French, which is admirable, and not admiralty, but admirable, they've gone a year, admirably, <laughs> and they still are white rioting. There's no real change. Now, whether or not the French have a different mechanism they could start utilizing as well, I don't know. I'm not, I haven't studied that. But you see that the protesting can go for a long time, and it really doesn't do much. And that's where we all look and say, well, see, it doesn't get you anywhere. And I've been saying, yeah, that one does some things. It's impressive, but it's not getting the out, the outcome, if I can use that term. Not getting the real, it's not bringing peace, is it? It's a continued battle. And those that are in the final seated decision have the control. And those you give the final seated decision have the control. And if you give a criminal the decision, what do you think an outcome would be? You'd certainly think it was going to be in favor of the criminal, don't you? So this is not, I'm not talking here outlandish thoughts in legal and lawful terms. I'm talking some common sense here. That's missed by everybody in this Riva, Rivali Commission uh, story. Rivali Commission delays Use Creek Gate decision. I think was the link that Vin E. gave me weeks and weeks ago. And I wasn't interested. I can't get involved with all this stuff. It's just too much to keep up with. It just overwhelms me. But... It comes back around in my discussion because someone called my colleague from Montana. I think this is Montana. Telling me a, the scenario, and I said, wait, that just sounds like a link that someone just sent me uh, to look at. And my, my view on this was in the story, and this is, I think, I think it was out of the chat room at RLM, was that uh, the discussion of the title was, it used to be about there was a heated discussion over a road closure. And I responded just out of the chat as you do it. If it's a heated discussion over a road, something's wrong. Something went wrong, something started wrong, or something buddy did something wrong. Because this road disposal is not a heated discussion. It's really cut and dried. You either have title or you don't. You follow the hierarchy of the law of the land or you don't. You either have authority to decide things or you don't. You can either assert a claim or you can't. It, this is not... In, in, there are questions of the real issues, but for the most part, the roads are pretty straightforward. Then I looked at that and said, well, this shouldn't be heated. Someone's done a problem. And I didn't look at it too much more until I talked to my colleague, and he's mentioning he got a call. And I had just done, and then I went back and did some research, and I found out a whole bunch of new stuff because it became important. I didn't know if we were going to need to give these people, whoever those people were, uh, help. But it was a phone call. And so we tried to prepare, even if we were not going to see uh, any action. We haven't, I haven't really got the word back if this was the same case, but it, it would follow the same thing, and it pretends a problem in Montana. That if there are two different programs, that are two different road closure programs for the rights of private property owners relative to the county trying to claim easement over your land, or ingress and egress rights as a county road over your land, you need to pay attention. If you if you're not getting if you, you think that you need to have a permit like a permission to carry a gun then you probably think you need a permission or a license to go use your ingress and egress rights over over the the state they call it the, now the state roads which are not true they're the roads that are to the people they're under county typically they're under county oversight but not con, not control in the way that we would be able to preclude anybody in fact I've told you where you can go read a state statute. It's in the Jefferson Mining District Highway link. Just click the link, you get a PDF. Read down to where the uh, statutes of uh, Oregon will tell you that the county has no power more than to oversight the disposition, the continuing disposition by due process. So there's no power in anything to take away the rights because later on it says you cannot interfere with the rights of the people that accepted the grant of the United States. And now we're back to our grant of 1866. Some people call it the 
RS-2477. We're not doing that today. That's been resolved in this case because of a couple things that the property owners did to themselves. Uh, use, um, so Revali Commission delays Use Creek Gate decision. Uh, the claim is the government's giving uh, the property owners every due process that they can before they make a decision, claiming that we're all neighbors and the county doesn't need to uh, come out after the property owners and take their land. What they end up talking about, if you don't understand, is when they make a road easement or road uh, disposal, it's 60 feet wide, whether you know this or not. This is what's frivolous about the public, the trails up in the forest, about being single track, double track, what the Forest Service or BLM might talk about. It's frivolous doesn't even apply actually and so when an easement is made it can be up to 60 feet is what's granted over time and so we're not talking about a small little thing a little trail going up this these private properties so this the decision this one article goes through and talks and reports that this is a mining claim plats that uh, the common owners from which made essentially make an easement of private use for themselves to use the land between to main access from the main road, which the county comes in at some point, maybe like 30 years ago, and claims as a public road or a county road. Now, you've got to be careful on the county and public road designation. Public road is one that goes all the way to the terminus. The county road in some states has been redefined for clarity to say it's only the road that the county manages. So I'm not going to get into that just to let you know you have to pull all this stuff in when you're looking at this. Here's a property owner trying to defend themselves to keep the gate they've put up that is adjacent to or connect, attaching uh, the an existing county road called Use, Use Creek, I think. The property owners are attacked to remove the gate. And so this story is convoluted to start with. I see that it's heated. I say, well, if it's heated, there's a mistake. Let's start looking for the mistake. And they say there was a five-hour-long uh, heat, sometimes heated meeting Friday. Tells me that there's some problem because this is not supposed to be a factual. If this was a road question on a county road, this would be a factual determination. My problem with that is, is if it's a county road, it shouldn't be a question. When you bring in the concepting that a private property owners are trying to protect themselves by a gate they've put up and the county hasn't taken it down, which you read the story, it says the county knows they could have done. And I've told you that's how we've gotten rid of Forest Service gates that are improper. We told the county just go up and take them down. And the road department writes a letter and says if you don't have this down by X amount of days, we're coming and taking it down and billing you. They have that power. It talks about that power, but they haven't exercised it. My suspicions are starting to raise this whole time. If it's a private property owners that have a gate, and the county hasn't taken it down due to a known right, we have a serious problem. And the, and the people that are they're trying to defend their rights may not know what those remedies might be, and the county's taking advantage. Well, you read through the story, you see there's a county attorney or some attorney involved who attempts to confine this hearing when, when the suggestion of new evidence was supposed to be put forward. And I then say, well, under what kind of a cause? Why are they before the county if the county road is a question? Given this is a mining claim plat, there's no comment that the road that was, there was an existing easement over it when the patent was issued. There's a serious defect in this discussion as I'm looking at it to try and make heads or tails of a convoluted issue. Well, we get down and I read a little bit, and it says some guy advances during this thing. They tried to bring the 1872 mining law in. That's all fine, but it's irrelevant at the point of the patent. The patent will have what the limitations are for every property owner. It will have the road that is there. And if there's no road, then we have a problem, Houston, and everywhere else. That uh, someone brings up the idea that there's documents that came out of Washington, D.C. that would say that there's no road there at all. Then I start to get a better idea what's going on. We have a real problem. Someone's advancing a cause or been told to do something, and they're not doing their right property rights. The county isn't correcting it, and the attorneys aren't fixing it. Then I, so that's one of the storied links you can get, and I think it's important to go through how convoluted something can get, but how you have to keep focused on the real thing. Don't go by the fear, the emotion. Don't be persuaded even by lots of people say, take them as a list of things of facts, 
that are either relevant or irrelevant. The other relevance you just take out, you put the relevance one in place, and you always start from the beginning. And when someone makes a claim for a private property, they have to show title first. I'm still trying to figure out what kind of an action is this thing that the county's even deciding where a gate is still across the road. And so I find another link based on this. Again, I don't have any guidance. Uh, it says, use Creek Road Facts, written by an op a guest opinion who goes through and explains more and more. Now we could go through and it tells about a Supreme Court case that went on and he explains that someone who's offering an opinion as a fact before the commission that's making a decision on whether or not this gate comes down, if it's a county road, uh, makes a misstatement, a mis misstatement of facts. He's, this article corrects the record. He explains that the, this case has already gone to the Montana Supreme Court and they claim that there was no jurisdiction in the judges to decide. He also suggests that it was a suggestion by a judge on that what the parties were supposed to do. And so this has got really, really convoluted as far as I'm still looking for what starts this thing, right? Where's the beginning action? Why are we doing that, folks? Because your first integration is, does the power that's claiming the right have the power? Is it, or is it just lying? And as I've told you, you're looking for that because if they do a color of authority and they don't, and it's unwarranted what they're doing, and they are professing the power to hand that uh, right or power property to someone else or themselves or not at all. Those are felonies. So I'm looking for the propriety here of the due process of the claimants. I would give the property owners the right to have an action, but is it the proper thing that they're doing? I don't. I haven't still found that. They're in all these stories. Nobody talks about this stuff, even though there's a technical discussion on what's going on to the Supreme Court. You have to understand that's a lot of time and expense on the property owners that were supposed to be in peace over their land. And my thought is, if this is a county road, that was that should be settled in the record already. This shouldn't take in no time at all. That the county has forestalled, forbeared to do that, that's a different question now. And they know to do that. And then I see that the attorneys involved, and you know I don't trust those guys at all because of the, my experience with most of them and all of them in the public lands and land law, None of which go to any continuing other education classes within the Bar Association. Go study that for yourself. You find out they have no training. All of which argue from the governmental side or an administrative imposition on a property owner that's supposed to be at peace in his property and, un and not disturbed. And so I'm already working with my own prejudice, if you will, to look at this and say we still have the problem. This has already been to the Supreme Court. It isn't what they said. They were saying that the the authorities that made decisions had no authority. Now you know why I'd do it. If I didn't if I didn't know it if I didn't know before, I know to go look at who has authority. And I've also told you who has authority if it was a disposed land, haven't I? You find that in that highway document on the Jefferson Mining District. Click the link, it goes to a PDF. If it's disposed. It's also explained how it disposed. But we also know there's a patent. So I'm going to return now over to another link. I think they, one of these people even had a map. It's a little bitty section on a, what looks to be a, a forest area. I don't even know, folks. I'm not there just looking at trying to orient myself. They're blocking a part of a road that goes into the forest land. And then I read this story from somebody who apparently wants ingress on that road, writing their report of what, what happened, and it was helpful. It also makes evidence that all of the government agencies are committing felony to do what they were doing. From the way I'm telling you, you can look at this, which is pretty interesting. Those that are telling you that they're there to do the public good are actually uh, com they're, uh, telling you that they're also committing crime when you frame it co more correctly. Now, you have to also understand the go federal government was involved to open this, try to open this county road up, saying that we ne they needed access to the forest area behind it, making their claim that they had a right to that with agencies that everywhere else, when it's only in the public land, would obliterate that road, was another problem for me. And so these facts, in my mind, I'm look, trying to make heads and tails of this, are building, as I'm telling you, and other things. Uh, but I'm trying to focus this down for a discussion to show you that the players didn't have title, if, uh, unless it was a county road. And why wasn't that? why was that gate still there? But if they weren't having a right, they're all committing felony to continue. 
They omitted to say the right thing and committed to say the wrong thing. And this stakeholder that they call themselves, someone who wants that, or some of these people that will want this, that don't have title, are making the report. That they say here, we finally get through, I'm trying to still make it, what action is this thing? What instituted the, com the, the county to, to, to do this? Because if I'm looking at it, why, folks? If I'm looking at it as a private property that was from a mining claim, there's been no mention that the patent set a road, and the property owner has a gate across it, that someone might be lying about the existence of that public road. And this is a private thing. And we hear that there was a contract made between the property owners for their own use. That the patent should have said there was a road there before. And if not, there would have been dedications by the private property owner in the record showing that they had dedicated that land for the purpose of a county road. None of which made the discussion. I'm listening for all of it, don't see any of it. Again, parsing through what is and what isn't and trying to figure out, well, what's the story here? Well, we get it from these people that are really interlopers on this. They explain that the federal government's there to claim all the need of that road. And no one stops to think, Maybe that's, they don't have the right to say that. Why? That becomes the question in my mind. Why are these people even doing this? This is not so a pro, an action for a property owner protecting their land. And this report says it. And I want, listen very carefully. And I want you to think about what I say when I say this next sentence or so. Qualify this sentence. If I'm a private property owner, have denied that there's a county road, why would I file the form, the petition that I hear in this report, which I accept as fact? On January 25th, 2017, you understand it's going on two years now, this thing's been going on, the Ravalli County Commission voted to reject a landowner petition to abandon a portion of Hughes Creek County Road. Following the majority vote to reject the petition, the Ravalli commissioners finally had to deal with the illegal gate that had obstructed the public from their lands, which previously commissioners had simply ignored in what was described as a kicking the can down the road situation. They go on to repeat the other stories in the grueling meeting and give a name of every agency representative that was there to say that they had a right to go up that road. Let me go back without convoluting more of this and going on. There's so much to go through here. Think about this, folks. You're the landowner. You're claiming there was no public road over your land. Would you file a petition to abandon a portion of a county road? Or do we fi have we found our problem? I'm hoping you're saying we found our problem. I hope that was self-evident. These people either figured that they needed to file this, or the Supreme Court or some attorney said they needed to go to the county and file a landowner petition to abandon a portion of a road they said was not a county road. Is not a congruent petition to their rights, is it? I hope you're following this very quickly. And the county didn't reject the petition because they didn't have jurisdiction. They rejected the removal or the, the uh, sus sustaining of the gate. If that wasn't a county road, did they have authority to say that? Does it look like they have authority when the petitioner, the one with the property and the rights, gives it to them, though? Not lawfully, but legally, I suppose we could say. That's a trick question, I guess, in some regard, isn't it? If I have a property owner and I give you the right to decide what's the, uh, to dispose my land, I guess I've kind of given over, haven't I? Well, yes and no. Because they still don't have the power and authority to do that, even if I make a mistake. And they are obligated to tell me that. Not the attorney said, well, you can't bring evidence of how it's not, not, a, not part of that petition. Now, I can't say for you what the real thing was been, because there's a couple of different angles that the property owner has at their disposal for remedy. One came to mind, and I'm not, this is not to say it's the only one. I think I would go different, but one came to mind to quiet title. That's a problem, though, if you go look at that remedy. And I think there's an easier way. It certainly was not a landowner petition to abandon a portion of a county road that doesn't exist. When you filed that as a landowner that said that there was, you were filing a petition to abandon a portion of the road, have you admitted that that road is in the county authority? 
And I have to say that if that's the case, then the county does have jurisdiction. The problem is some guy in a meeting said that the Washington paperwork, which I assume is the patents and our paperwork that way, the source documents of the, of the power on the land, showed that the county couldn't take the jurisdiction. And so if you don't question who has the power, actual power, and who's lying about it, right up front, I think you can lead yourself into a problem. Why did this, this story get heated? Because I think that for right or wrong, or mistake or not, the landowner filed the wrong petition, however they felt they had to file it. Shame on the judge if the judge of Supreme Court offered this. Shame on any judge that offered that they, they had to file this type of petition to admit the road that the easement that they made privately amongst themselves was a county road. Shame on the county for not identifying they didn't have title. Shame on the private attorney, the public attorney who said they couldn't bring evidence of this in and change the petition because in a way he was right, but in a way the action should have been rejected because it actually wasn't a county road. But what should the property owner do? Well, we can see you don't file as a landowner that has a private road to petition for the county to abandon that road when they never had the authority. So my point here again is we don't properly act even though we have property and rights. We don't go to our own objective black and white authorities on how that's supposed to be. And we don't use our own brains to figure out filing a petition as a landowner to abandon a county road that doesn't exist may not be the right filing. What might be a better way than even the quiet title would be to simply enjoin the county's in in interference. You flip the burden on them. You just bring your title and show that the county has none. See, when you make a, a petition to abandon, haven't you invited the world in to say how much they need the use of that continuing use of that road? And you've again agreed that it existed, didn't you? So here's an evidence of what I was talking about before. When you allow people who don't have a right to say they have a right, how are you ever going to maintain your property when the mob shows up to claim your stuff? It's no different than the right, in my right, the inherent power that you have for keeping bare arms and, and the right inherent power to your own self and your own thoughts and all these other things. When you allow, when you ask someone to question your stuff, why are you surprised and why do you get angry and heated over the fact that they're trying to take it? And so, I want to go back to this real quick. The landowner petitioned abandoned to, to abandon a portion of a county road that didn't exist on their own private land. And they can't get the county to make the right decision. And the county rejects their proposal to abandon the county road, which impliedly admits it exists. But does it in law is, an, is the real question. And from what basis I can see and what I was talking with my colleague about the case, if this is the same case, and if not, Montana has a problem. Its judges and its attorneys are saying that landowners, private landowners that want to keep the county from possessing the ingress that they may have private are being told to file these petitions, is the problem. This petition will not protect your property rights. An action to enjoin the usurpation of the, of, of the obligations and duties of the county to protect that would have been a, proper, a bit more proper to do. A simple injunction to keep them from interfering with the private right, showing the title and the lack of public access is all you need. When you do that, there is no public input. The one who's attacking you has to come with their title. In this case, I haven't seen yet that the county can produce title. But they also have an equity problem. They can't determine their own cause, which this petition negates because it says that they don't have a cause that they're doing on their own because it admits it's a public road. Now, why would a public property owner admit it's a public road and then expect that that gate's going to stand? I don't, I don't get the logic here. I don't get how people think this way. And maybe I've made too far a time here. Uh, it, the answer to me was in this statement by an adversary, that a petition, uh, the, land, the property owner themselves, 
There's a couple of them, quite a few. Petitioned and said in the petition that that was a county road. Does that make sense to you folks? I hope I hope you say no, and I, and I hope you, I know I'm repeating myself. I don't know what, this is the, the crux of our problem. We allow those upon our property that have no right to have a say. We allow those that are authorita, that profess to have authority, and don't have a say. And then we complain that we have our stuff taken. We complain we don't have the life that we, we're expecting to live. Is the problem, the, this is the revolution, the history repeating itself, that hindsight should tell us we need to stop doing. The, all this is a simple. They need when I look at this, and I'm, I have to be careful because I'm really minimal in the information. There could be any detail, any new detail that could change this. But I say this there was a trepidation I did last week. Given I know what I'm looking at here based on what I have, the better thing here would have been to withdraw the petition, wouldn't it? But immediately file an injunction naming the county as the wrongdoer. And that then does what? In that action, it places the burden on the county, not gives them the power to decide. This is not really quiet title, I don't think, either. It could be. And I, I, I caution myself there to tell you, I caution myself because I'm not quite sure how each state would handle these. But a quiet title action also gives the other side a different quality of ability. That someone who, if you're not a, no, if you don't have the knowledge of the property owner, they can maneuver around. And you have to be in a position where you don't allow a question. And so a direct injunction sounds to me to be the thing that would be the least, the most secure but the least vulnerabilities to it. But I hope you agree, the landowner who has a private property and a private easement over their private property, that a county is attempting to claim as county property, the remedy of which is not to file to the county to decide that they need to abandon that claim when the actual action should say they don't have the claim. And this, this continues my, my presentation to you over and over. Don't create questions and don't allow conditions that allow people to have a say when they don't actually have a right. Now be careful to not lose it here, where everyone has an opinion. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the black and white provability of the right that you have to probably find in other places by evidence. Where do you find your right as a private property owner is in your patent. What you have is listed within the four corners of that document, no matter how many pages it is. That's what you have. It's all you have, and that's what you have. And it's held against all the world, including the government. And there's certain processes that have to go on in order to change and alter that. One could be that there was an eminent domain proceeding with compensation. That would be one thing they would have to produce, but they don't have that. That's why I didn't see anything in here about that. Again, my mind is looking, well, we got a crime going on in a color under color of official capacity as I started seeing the anomalies and the problems devolving, and it's going heated instead of factual, that eventually proves out what my theory is. But in a con another, the contorted way, the landowners aren't aware enough to not file that petition, that they were also persuaded by officials to say and to do that. That had they been filed and denied, that would have been an, a better answer than the county to, con under color, accept that it was a county road and then decide not to remove the gate and to keep it open. Why? Because the petitioner said so. And so, this is a simple object lesson of how you can claim your rights, you can claim you have rights, you can claim you have property, you can claim you have a thing, you can have the knowledge that you have the thing, and because you didn't properly act to protect it, you'll lose it anyway. Knowledge of a thing is not the power. Properly applying the knowledge about that thing and your knowledge of yourself with that 
relative to others is the power. I can't say this enough. What I talk about is just shifted over just a little bit over from where most people think. And we're being hurt terribly by it. And I don't, I get, I guess, what more do I say? What more do I say? In this case, why would anybody, why would you take and hand to the county a petition to abandon their false claim? Why would, what's the outcome of that? How do you expect to win that? How does a landowner who has a private property on a private road expect to win a case where that private property owner agrees that that private road is actually a county road and hands it to the county to give back? Can't, can't be right thinking, folks. Object lesson. How not to protect your property. How not to assert your property. Authorities and jurisdictions are all important to figure out. Your relationship relative to your condition is all, all important to figure out. And in that, with that, I want to bring up something that, again, these last few broadcasts I hesitate to uh, bring some of this stuff up because it's uh, like a loaded gun. But successes are successes. And I want to advance to you the other side of that ingress ingress egress. On the one hand you have this condition where a patent is issued and there is no road that I can tell in the evidence before me that people made a road by private contract amongst themselves, a private easement that goes into forest land that was never a public a county road. That the county tried to claim just because of its existence an opening to a county road. That doesn't give them right. Then we have the other side, the use of those county roads, the use of the disposed road. As I've told you, there's proofs out there, if you'll just do the research, to keep yourself on the side, the, not, the production side, the grant side, the disposal side of the law, and not engage in the commerce side. That I was handed a, a link to a video, how to handle a police traffic stop. That I can't, I have to be careful here to wholeheartedly hand it over, because you never know who you're going to, Mess, who's going to mess with you in the color of authority. However, if you ever doubted me as to the thing I tell you about the commerce connection and the requirement of that connection to licenses and drivers, licenses and certifications and registrations and all this, it, this video is evidence, to start with at least, that should open your eyes to the reality of this condition, where somebody and I had to chuckle a little bit because I offer that you need to have your bag of law wherever you go. You need to have the law that keeps you separate and different within the black and white, not your made-up opinions, not a list of some old dude's discussion in old, old court cases, but the current statutes that show you're not part of that. And I say that without knowing what this gentleman's proof was, which sound over there at Sound Minds, if you're listening here, I don't know how to get in touch with these people. They're at T Tulare County Cop Watch. If someone could track down his law that he handed the cop, I really would like to see a copy of that. So here's the point, folks. We have a success at one cop interaction. So be careful on this. That someone pulls out their, their bag of law as I conceive it. They have their law in a satchel. The first thing out of their mouth is, here's some things that I want you to see. And I had to smile. Whether they've heard this from me or this is or not, it doesn't matter. Here's a simple proof of how you're supposed to do these interactions, at least to this outcome and the potential that it's there. But you also need to find out this information, so I'd, I'd, I'd like to see it to qualify it. That this is an eight-minute video that explains how you assert in face of a cop who admits he doesn't believe you but ultimately has to walk after he's told, shown in black and white, what the law is, contrary to what he believes. This has a good outcome. The cop was pretty cool. So I don't even want to, I'm not dissing on the cop here at all. I caution us on just giving over to the what we see happening. 
uh, the guy's brilliant in how he addresses what he's doing. It's him. So that's perfect. Most importantly, I want you to see the procedural standard. They, they say a little bit too much near the end. The first thing out of his mouth was actually something out of his hand. He didn't allow the cop to defame him by trying to bring him into the capacity of a terrorist or a sovereign citizen. You'll hear the backhanded statement from the cop that tries to do that, and the gentleman re responds perfectly. I'm not going to answer any of those questions. Please refer to my the law I've handed you. And then he goes into, I can't believe it myself. Perfect, beautiful uh, presentation. I don't even believe what I'm reading. I'm not even from here. I come down through two states and I come to California and here is the stuff. I'm going down to notarize him. Actually, what he had should have had is should have had notarized copies for the cop, not the notarized. You need to keep those back. But anyway, I want you to, this is such a, a proof of what I was telling you uh, that I need you to see a bag of law, so-called, a satchel of law, come flying out and put in the cop's hands the point of first contact. No comment other than that. No testimony, no excuses, no discussion. And then you hope that the cop follows the law. He goes back, does some research, comes back and says, I don't agree with this, but have a nice day, essentially. You need to see this dynamic. You, we need to find out what that guy had that caused that. I'd certainly want to see it. I want to qualify for myself what that cop responded to. There's a bigger work that has to go behind this. Understand it could have went different. But it is at least an example that commerce is required. There's a way to present that. And you don't put yourself in jeopardy. One example, at least, that I want people to see. I'll have the link if you haven't found it already. Commerce is the connection to licenses. Their permissions to do something that's otherwise unlawful. Your travel on the road is by a grant. It's not unlawful. You're not making a special use of the highway in commerce. I don't say that. You've got to go find the statutes. Apparently in California, as I, they're a common law state that is more present. Uh, the statutes are there more cleanly. I used to, I had those down, some of them, before, but that's not the law I normally do. And so I haven't really collected those. But here's your first example, that commerce is the connection to the servitude for having all this paperwork. Why do I say that? What do we talk about here? The reality has changed, folks. They wanted you into real ID. The real ID is that license for commerce. That's your connection. So you don't start shedding this stuff. You don't start acting and responding more properly to what your rights are. You are going to be, as I've said before, over and over, subsumed by the occupier in your own country, doing to you what they're doing to other people to harm them. We have it in us to stop. We have example now of that potential. Exactly what I've told you to be done, maybe not exactly executed, but good enough. Why? Because the gentleman gets to leave. He doesn't get beat down. He doesn't get shot. His stuff not taken. An acknowledgement of the authority that he presented in black and white was acknowledged by the enforcer in a police uniform, to his credit as well. And that once we take the next step, which is to now put that out in the, in the government and say, why are you going to be stopping us at all if you have no evidence of a commercial inter activity? Will be the next stage of us pushing back and not to the point we're not stopped at all. What I think you auditors think you're doing. Uh, for walking around with a gun or whatever, or whatever you guys do. Uh, not even the gun, just walking around, you know, wanting to check the government. What we want to get to the point is that we don't have to do that. We want to get them just to fulfill the law the way it's written. Anyway, so I my hat's off to how they executed this into Larry. I, I don't know totally if it was completely correct. I'd like to see the, if we can get, if I can get an email, Mark on the Beast at protonmail.com of the package that he handed him, that's what I do. I hand a package, a bag of law, or I piece it out to them. I told you about my interaction with my friend and uh, minor, co-owner, co co-miner of the, of the, that we're out on the river, it's supposed to be, you know, uh, we're not supposed to be out there, they say, because the law supposedly says so. Well, in, I have a bag of law, and I have the sections of exception. And when the sheriff shows up, that's what I'm talking to him. That's exactly what I did. But I did it page by page, not handing them the whole thing, which is a little bit dangerous in my mind to see, but that's okay. It worked. 
and and he did it go with the flow. He he did it on his terms, and so I can't really because it was a success and it points these things out. I can't uh, admire it enough, but it's not a guarantee. Your right to do something doesn't necessarily be a guarantee. Let me remind you of the one guy that had a gun at the church that died. You can have the right. There can still be a criminal to take it. Is reality. There's not a different reality, like Blasio would say. There's a reality. And we have to meet it. As difficult as the situation, as short a time span that might be, we might be faced with, I've told you we have to anticipate this so that we respond better. I don't know what would have saved that first guy, the second guy met, when he had a gun and still died. I don't know what would have saved him. But I can tell you, I know I would not have done two things pretty, just they just would not have happened. I know when I look at this other video, how to handle it, I would have done the exact same thing. Here's my law. Here's what my anticipation of the law is. And you hear at the end, the cop doesn't believe it's correct, but he has to let him go. I don't know how he came to that determination, but that's the truth, and that's the reality. Did that reality change? No. It's all how you respond. Do you want to be the guys that, that listen to the authorita that said the Bar Association or whomever, even the wrong information, that you file a landowner's petition for the county to abandon a road they don't have? Or do you want to start looking how this guy did? Here's the law. You don't have authority. And they make the choice, not on you. They, the authorita, makes it, the, the costume, makes a choice of whether or not they want to violate that law. It's a much better position I'd have you all in, and I've been advocating for you all to be in forever, as long as I've been talking. And we have finally have people doing it. I don't know if they've listened to me, but it doesn't matter. It is right there what you need to do. The point of first contact is not you discussing the condition. It's you presenting the law that said there was no condition. And there's essentially, you don't even say it this way, but because it comes out, it was a mistake. Leave it there. Don't need to call them names. Anyway, the perfect what happened here. He, I don't know what happens to him in the future. That's another problem. But for this example, you see truths. One after the other in this video relative to right of ingress and egress under the disposal grants, not the motor vehicle code. No, you don't have the right to drive. But that subject matter pertains to a certain activity which you may not be doing. And there's a way to present that for all you all that say, well, I'm agreeing to agree with the government. No, you're not. You're showing how you're different than the one they want. They have to make the decision in order to, to, to not. The Revelli Reve County is not one of these reasonable cops. They accepted a case they didn't have a right to accept. As I said, the rejection shouldn't have been to denounce the property owner's gate. It should have been a rejection that we don't have authority over private property. In fact, they are the one that would be the defendant in, the, in a properly poised case, wouldn't it? So how are they in equity supposed to decide their own cause? It's never brought to because the landowner agrees that they're a criminal. In this case, let's put it back over to this how to stop a cop, a police stop, traffic stop. They didn't stop the traffic stop, first of all, but they avoided the consequences by properly asserting what they had to do, which was not a question, not an issue. They didn't hand it to the cop to make that decision. What do you think the outcome would have been there with the property owner saying, well, I have an ingress and egress right that you're claiming I don't. Uh, how about you tell me whether or not I do? Would be a different decision in this video at the end I'll give you how to handle a police traffic stop. They didn't avoid the traffic stop. We want eventually to have cops not stop everybody just because you're traveling down the road. We want them to be witnesses of whether or not you're doing a commercial activity that doesn't have the, the subsequent evidence that it is in compliance with that commercial code. What, now we'll start bringing peace to people when we get there. You see, understand, we're two steps behind. I keep telling you that. It's not that you avoid the cop, the stop. You need to stop the stop, given you're not in it. 
It's like I say with the miners. When the government addresses a miner, attacks him when he isn't when he's only doing mining, the miner can never win. The attack should have never happened. The government agent should have never misconstrued what he was doing, unless he had what? Probable cause. Maybe even the lesser reasonable suspicion. But since we're talking about the property, that's probable cause always. And his color of imposition under a flawed color of authority to divest you of your property is a felony in the first step. That doesn't come out in the video, and I don't expect it to. The gentleman did what he needed to do. And he said, so I'm going to also encourage something here that I'd be careful on what I'm saying. But he said, he admitted that he was, a, he was shaking or afraid. And I say, good. This is, has to be done out of all humility. Do not get arrogant. That could have gone the wrong way. Don't be afraid, but your body responds to the immensity of that moment. You know the consequences. And I'm glad that that happened in a way because that happens to me no matter how sure I am. You don't know who you're dealing with. And yet you act anyway. You move forward in what your rights are. Not the wrong way, the more proper way, or at least as the best you can understand it. But you do so with a concern. Why? Because we've allowed these guys to get the idea they're the law. They enforce the law. That's why you hand it back to them and say that's not a law to enforce against me. Not by your opinion. So I don't commend the being afraid and feeling that fear. That's a natural consequence. And the condition that shows you you live in a land that works on terror at all, always. Nothing's changed in that. And until that goes away, we haven't been successful as a people. Anyway, I appreciate what happened in Tulare County. I love seeing it. I, again, i got to be careful on wholeheartedly embracing the totality of it, but absolutely how it went down, how he brought out the bag of law, his satchel of law, popped it right out was the answer that I tell you to do and a success and example for you to see. We need to get into that space. We then need to translate that to the so-called politicians, the so-called authorita, the officials, to stop treading on us in these capacities. Unless they have more, unless they can go the two steps, there's nothing for them to interfere with us and we can get back to living in the peace that law was to bring when the government was constrained to its limits. Pause in here. You hope you get this. I hope you're understanding that there's a power that we have. We've seen enough, folks. Operation Hindsight 2020, I hope it becomes something. I made it up, yeah, but I think it's something. I think we can look back and we can see the regurgitation of old fear-based and trauma-based plans, that they prey upon that ignorance. They get us to be fired up emotionally instead of factually and critically thinking and, and uh, by, the law, by the objective basis that limits them. We fail at all that to bring us till today that they can use these tools against us. And until we stand up as a mass of society, not just a 2%, 3%, that mass of people needs to stand up. That majority of the community, as we see in the Virginia Constitution, we're going to continue the problem. And I can't see, they were telegraphing in New York, it's going to get worse. The noose is coming tighter, folks, as I told you. Thank you for tuning in today. Oh, everything you can do to help yourself is you can reflect that in what I'm telling you. Grimner, thank you for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. And Jules, uh, thank you for reposting and syndicating that on your website at YouTube, uh, ucy.tv and sound and normalization of ignorance. And just in case, thank you all you guys. All the thumbs up. All the thumbs the thumb down. Veronica, thank you for pointing out in the chat. Uh, the thumb down is just someone wants attention. That's a pretty weak personality. So you got a thumbs down. Tell me why so I can correct the error. Thank you very much, folks. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature willing. that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
that's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. <laughs>